Germany has decided to send an initial shipment of 14 Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine and allow other nations to send their heavy vehicles. The decision came after weeks of domestic and international pressure to deliver armored vehicles aimed at helping Kiev regain territory seized by Russia. Similarly, United States will also be considering M1 Abram tanks with other support equipment. Berlin's decision follows Britain's announcement this month that it would send 14 of its Challenger 2 tanks to Ukraine. The total number so far stood at 28 with both Leopard 2 and Challenger 2. On the other hand, Ukraine has said it needs 300 MBTs to make a difference on the battlefield, as Russian forces are deploying advanced T-90M. In this video we will look at does sending Western tanks to Ukraine makes any difference. The first and major issue is the training of crew and development of tactics to use Western-designed heavy MBTs in an active war zone as the war in Ukraine is completely different than conventional armor warfare. Like kamikaze drones flying around to hunt heavy objects, further artillery guns are also more active on both sides. Another issue Ukrainian forces will face will be the deployment of these machines on Ukrainian terrain which is marsh and wet. This will limit the mobility and force the Ukrainian army to move these tanks on hardened pathways. In addition, these tanks are not designed for urban warfare against pro-Russian forces. Will Germany provide those machines with urban survival kits that is another matter of subject. Then comes another major problem for the Ukrainian army, the maintenance of these mighty machines and spares. The effectiveness of these machines will be governed by the supply of spare equipment. The plus point for Ukrainian planners is that their armor is near to the same design as Russian tanks. With a low turret design, automatic loading mechanism, and weight equal to a medium category of tanks. It was difficult for the Russian army to differentiate between Ukrainian T-72 and Russian T-72 on scopes, unless the history of armor is known. The design of Western tank is itself a killing factor for Ukrainians as with huge boxy turrets. These tanks are easily recognizable. Their huge size makes them easy to spot from air. Even small UAVs can identify those tanks conveniently. This will create a huge problem for Ukrainians as far as the concealment of these tanks is concerned. In terms of protection, Western tanks are far ahead of Soviet conventional design. With more focus on crew safety these tanks are equipped with blast doors with blowout panels for ammunition. Both Challenger 2 and Leopard 2 are better protected against Russian APFSDS rounds. But this is not just limited to armor-piercing rounds. There are ATGMs on both sides of the theater. One thing is sure whichever variant is coming to Ukraine it will not be equipped with a hard-kill active protection system. Their protection system will be mainly laser warning receivers and smoke dischargers, which is also available on T-64 tanks Ukrainian soldiers are using. Further, Leopard deployment by Turkish forces in Syria, and M1 tanks by Saudis in Yemen conflict, the result was not favorable to their respective armies. The positive aspect was that the human loss was low as compared to Russian tanks. In terms of firepower, these tanks are well equipped as compared to the tanks already in service with the Ukrainian army. With better optics and fire control systems, the firepower of Western tanks is superior. Until now it's not clear what type of shells these NATO countries are providing with these machines. Both Russian and Ukrainian tanks in this conflict use 125mm guns, while the barrel size of the Western tank is 120mm. The 5mm ammunition does not matter in terms of lethality, but it will create an issue of different sizes of rounds. Further no guided projectile can be fired from Western tanks unlike from T-series of tanks. Another challenge will be the air defense. Ukrainian army lags in terms of sophisticated short-range air defense to protect these tanks on the battlefield. Even Ukraine is unable to establish air superiority over captured part of country. What suicide drone are doing to air defense units is in front of us. Russian choppers with guided anti-tank missiles can easily hit these machines, and even UAVs can easily target these tanks. In the end, although Western tanks are superior in terms of scopes and protection, there are several issues linked to their deployment including mobility, training of crew, air defense, lack of active protection system, and equivalent firepower. Further Putin also instructed its army to hit Western supplied equipment on a priority basis.